Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. We are back with uh, my good friend, David Zills, the apologist, the uh, the one who, who talks to us about whether or not we can actually trust this stuff. And that's hard sometimes. It, it really matters. So uh, I'm excited for this one. David, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, I uh, these are tough questions, um, but I, I kind of think you have to ask them if you're going to be a thinking person who has belief in Jesus, because in our culture, there are lots of opposing views and lots of questions, and you can't really put up blinders to them and have a, a mature faith. A mature faith has to interact with these questions and say, yeah, what about those things? And so it's important that we talk about these, these issues. Absolutely. That for a faith that actually is willing to confront and offer comfort for the rest of your life and not just sort of be closeted off as, as sort of that one thing that you do that can't touch reality we need to think. And that's what we're going to do. Yeah. I find there are times when it's, when life gets hard and I kind of wonder what, what is even real or what can I actually bank on having facts that I know my spiritual relationship with Jesus is based on is really comforting because I know it's not up to me to kind of hold up this faith and conjure it up inside of me, but there's actually concrete stuff outside myself that I can point to and say, I didn't make this up. This is real. I can bank on it. Even when I'm hurting or can't make sense of life, I can point to something that's real and say, I can hold on to that. So it's this objective side of truth is where the comfort comes from. Because if it's something I make up, then, well, it's yeah. up to me to maintain it. And as soon as I get confused, well, there it goes. Right. So what do we got today? Yeah. So we started talking about, in our last two episodes, Christmas and the idea that when, if, if it's true, which is a big if, but if it's true that God became a man, in the person of Jesus, then that puts God under the microscope, so to speak. And he's not a God out there in, you know, in cyber, not cyberspace, you know, outer space somewhere, you know, the ether kind of beyond the mystical veil. And we have to sort of kind of hope that he's out there and do our best to believe it. But it puts him in concrete experiential terms that we can test with the tools of historiography. Um, and then last time we talked about, we're going to focus on two main claims. And these are the claims that set Jesus apart from everybody else. If they're not true, then we're kind of back to the drawing board because, you know, Jesus isn't special. And so now we have to go back and evaluate everybody. But if these two things about Jesus are true, it kind of short circuits the question of which religion can I have confidence in because it puts mm -hmm. Jesus at a level that no one else can match. And those two things are, was Jesus God? Mm -hmm. And you might think this is a theological claim, but you can actually test it historically, and that's what we want to talk about. And then the second thing is, did Jesus rise from the dead, which is obviously a historical claim, um, and we'll find that we can test that too. And so we want to focus on who is Jesus. And so a lot of Christian apologetics um, talks focuses on the resurrection, and I think that's good, but I think if that's the only thing you do, it can kind of miss the point because if Elvis rose from the dead, well, that's really interesting, but like, I don't know why, like, why did Elvis rise from like, and that makes, it's just a freak thing. It's a freak event. So if Jesus rose from the dead, okay, well, maybe Buddha rose from the dead. That's a freak event. I mean, weird stuff happens, you know, twilight sure. zone, but if Jesus is God, now we have a reason to suspect that God would raise Jesus from the dead. And so it's this context of all these things fitting together, not just the resurrection, not just the deity of Jesus, not just the miracles, but all these things fitting together in a pattern. And it's the overall pattern, the cumulative case that allows each piece of the pattern to make sense in light of the other pieces. And so I think the key question when you're talking historical apologetics um, or talking to someone who just believe something different, or maybe talking to yourself when you're trying to figure out what do I believe and how do I make sense of this? I think a clarifying question is who is Jesus? And I think a lot of answers have been given to that question. So we have to start going through like we talked about last time and testing the hypotheses with the data that we have. 
Right, because if if Jesus is, and, and this is the problem, uh, if Jesus is, regardless of what your, your faith is, an important historical figure and an important figure in the lives of other people, he's going to be co-opted by every group of the power, which is why the Democrats and the Republicans will both quote him to say the other one's wrong. It's why that Jesus is always sort of brought up to, to win an argument, because if Jesus is on your side, you must be right, regardless of who he is or what he's done, which is a strange thing, because if he hasn't done anything notable, then why is he getting quoted all the time? Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, where do we sort of begin to test this then? Well, yeah, I I mean, to start out that like everybody has claimed Jesus is on their side. There have been claims, the the Mormons claim that Jesus was a Mormon prophet. The Muslims claim that Jesus was a Muslim prophet. The Jews claim he was a Jewish heretic. Um, There are claims that he was a Buddhist monk. There are claims that he was a hippie. Yeah, I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, anything. I mean, he, he was a revolutionary. He was all these things. And so um, actually in the late, the second half of the 19th century, it was the first so-called quest for the historical Jesus, where you say, I'm not going to assume the Bible's true, but I'm going to try to figure out based on what they called scientific historical research, what Jesus was like. And They approached it with these assumptions that there's no supernatural, and so obviously, if there's no supernatural, most of the Jesus stuff gets thrown out. It's like the Thomas Jefferson Bible. And so, uh, was it Albert Schweitzer at the end of the at the of the 19th century said it looks like everyone has created Jesus in their own image, and so every commentator would be like, "Well, I think Jesus is like this," but it was really a reflection of their own views. And so, this is not what we want to do. We want to let the facts guide us and not our presuppositions and our biases and not allow those to get in the way. So I I think, you know, a lot of these things, most people aren't going to take too seriously. Was Jesus a Buddhist monk? We have no evidence (laughs) that he traveled to India. You know, was Jesus a hippie? Well, maybe, but he had no interaction with the modern hippie movement. So there may be some similarities, but, you know, so we have to maybe get past the the stuff that is kind of the, the joke about theories and go yeah. to the ones that people take seriously. And I think the one most people take seriously today is that Jesus was, you know, a great moral teacher. Mm. And I, I think this is undeniable. I mean, people have read the Sermon on the Mount and said, this is some of the most lucid, clear, poignant, ethical teaching, lots of insight into the human heart, very poetic, very succinct. And so there's no doubt Jesus was a good moral teacher. But the question is, is that the extent of what he was? Is that what he was about? Was that his whole mission? And I mean, by his own words, we can sort of struggle with this, but but especially like you said, when we start to look from the outside, there's there's more too, right? Yeah. And so the key that the key claim that we're going to argue for is that Jesus was God. And this may seem like it's a theological claim. You can't use historical evidence to support it, but you actually can. Um, and though the way you do it, there's a couple ways to look at it. One way is to say it's a two-step argument. The first is you look at the claims of Christ. Who did he think he was really? And then the second is look at the character of Christ. And so, um, Kind of the way it's framed is if Jesus thought he was just a good moral teacher, then there are a lot of people who have thought that. But if Jesus thought he was Yahweh, so not just a God of the Hindus, one among many, but like the only creator of everything, then that is kind of whack. Like, honestly, like (laughs) no good moral teacher is going to be like, yeah, I created everything. I, I'm yeah. I'm pretty big deal, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like you're gonna be like, uh, what did did you are you high or something? You know, like, right? What well, are but you that's doing? actually it. The the vast majority of the people that can sort of conceive of themselves as the creator of the cosmos usually aren't put together enough to sort of do much but yell at people in the bus station. Um, yeah. it's there's yeah. something here. So, so, so the first step is, did, did Jesus claim this? And wh- I don't want to focus on that yet because that's going to need a whole episode to say, well, who did Jesus actually think he was? Sure. And kind of the two pieces to that are, who did Jesus claim to be as recorded in the four gospels? Mm-hmm. And then the second step is, were those words put in his mouth after the fact? Right. You know, it's the idea that belief that Jesus was God evolved over time sure. and if Jesus heard what Christians were saying about him now, he'd roll over in his grave. He'd be like, you got me all wrong. Um, so 
you know, we have to say, what did Jesus, what is he recorded as saying? And then were those recordings authentic or were they put in his mouth after the fact? So those are the claims of Christ. And if we can establish that Jesus claimed to be Yahweh of the Jews, then this rules out the good moral teacher theory. We talked about, you know, you put all the hypotheses on the table and then one by one, let the data start ruling them out till hopefully you just have one left. Well, the good moral teacher is falsified by the idea that Jesus claimed to be Yahweh because John Stott makes a really um, good argument for this in his book, Basic Christianity. It's kind of like C.S. Lewis, mere Christianity, but basic Christianity, John Stott. Um, and he, he has a chapter on the claims of Christ and then a chapter on the character of Christ. So he follows this outline and he, he notes in, in the course of this that anybody that we regard as kind of being ethically you know, as Lutherans, we'd say sanctified, but kind of pure, holy, they've, they've achieved a level of moral sensitivity, the more morally sensitive we become, the more aware of our own faults we become. And yeah. so if Jesus was actually a very morally in insightful person, then there's no way he could have looked at himself as a human being and said, yeah, I'm like, I'm like the God of the universe. It doesn't make sense. And so it really does rule out this good moral teacher thing because either, either he's lying on purpose and we're back to drink the Kool-Aid Jonestown, you know, where he's just trying to be popular to kind of get power or money or whatever, fame, or he's really honestly thinks this, in which case um, maybe he's right, but if he's not, he's he's pretty crazy because... I mean, you can claim to be a lot of things, but it's hard to be sane and really come to this conclusion without, you know, like losing a couple steps along the way. Absolutely. I, I, and so, you know, we, we, I think, have spent a little bit of time with this and, and probably might circle back around to it. But I mean, if, if money was sort of the goal and, and fooling people was the goal, it ended poorly. Um, but so kind of coming back to this then, uh, the the uh, the Sermon on the Mount is something that you quoted, and, and it doesn't mess around when it comes to moral teachings. It actually flat out says, "Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect." Not not be pretty good or be better than bad. You know, try to let the good outweigh the bad, but be perfect. Yeah. So he you have this juxtaposition of these really good moral teachings along with this absurd claim, unless it's true. And so you have to kind of go through and make sense of this. And so we'll talk about establishing Jesus' claims. And the main framework is that there are really four options. And this has been popularized by people like C.S. Lewis, but it's it's an old argument. And it's Jesus was either telling the truth when he said claim to be Yahweh, in which case he was Lord. So there's alliteration, lots of L's. Or he was lying and he knew it was a lie, in which case he, he was a liar. He was a fraud. He was a con artist. We've talked about that theory. Or he was he was wrong, but he was sincere, in which case he was a lunatic because he sincerely believed wrongly that he was the Lord of the universe. And so he's a lunatic. And then the fourth option is that he never claimed these things, but the words were put in his mouth after the fact by his followers who somehow came to the conclusion that this crucified guy was the creator of the cosmos. And so we have to look at those four options, Lord, liar, lunatic, legend are the four options. And so we'll start to rule those out. But to start out, we'll say, if Jesus claims are authentic, we can rule out the good moral teacher um, as that's the, you know, we, we can't say he's just a good moral teacher because he doesn't, as C.S. Lewis said, he doesn't leave that option to us. Um, and if you look at the responses to Jesus during his lifetime, he wasn't like, a, oh, that's a, that's nice. That makes me feel good. He was very polarizing. People yeah. said, you're crazy. They, they said that. I think his brother said, you're out of your mind. People accused him of having a demon. People worshiped him. And then there was, was the other category of people where they said, I am really puzzled because this is weird. You're a puzzling person. And they just kind of scratched their heads and asked him questions and didn't know what to make of it. But right. there was nobody that was just kind of patronizing and saying, oh, that's nice. We already knew that that was a good moral teaching. Nobody said that. Right. And for that, he was very rarely outright dismissed either. Like the, the, the crazy person that yells at you at the subway about being God, like, all right, man, I'll give you some change. But after that, I'm not going to think about it. Like there, by all reports, uh, all reports, th there was a following that, that, that gathered behind this thing. People paid attention. 
people paid attention either following him or hating him and wanting to kill him. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to kill the guy on the subway no. who says I'm, I am Napoleon, you know, but yeah, it, he was deeply polarizing. And the way we can make sense of that are his claims were in some ways meant to be polarizing. They weren't yeah. supposed to give you this nice comfy room. You have to make a choice. What is going on with this guy? Right. Right. So we, we can dismiss moral teaching. Um, are, are there other sort of important ones that, that we need to address? Um, I think anything, I think in the category of a good moral teacher, there's mm-hmm. anything that would be a well-intentioned human being. So maybe he was opposing Rome. Maybe he was, um, you know, trying to reform the Jewish nation calling it to repentance like John the Baptist. Any of these things where you're saying well-intentioned hu- human and no more than human, any of those categories I think is ruled out if the claims to deity are authentic. And so it, it really does boil down to those four options, Lord, liar, lunatic, legend. And so that's what we want to look at. Fair enough. So where do we go from here? I think we're going to have to spend some time looking at Jesus' claims and saying, did Jesus actually think he was God or was or, you know, what is he recorded as saying in the Gospels? And are we interpreting his words wrong? Did his followers get it wrong? Or are these actual claims as recorded in the New Testament to being God? And then we'll look um, maybe in another episode at the liar, lunatic, and especially the legend, which is the most popular theory these days, yeah. which is that these things, yeah, they're recorded in the Bible, but Jesus never said them. They were legends that developed over time. And we got we to gotta address that because that's a serious contention that we should take seriously. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, come back and, and watch us on the Drive to School podcast. Like, subscribe, share. David, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a good one, man. All right. Sounds good. You too. All right. Take care.